Wednesday. Kim, my favorite day of the week. Kim, what's going on? Hey, well, uh, hi from Bali. <laughs> Hello, you are living the uh, the freedom builder lifestyle, huh? Tuning in from the tropics, I like it. <laughs> Yeah, today sure we am. have yeah today we have an awesome session that i'm really excited for and i'm really glad you're on for it kim today we're talking about amazon product photography but before we dig into the content kim anyone who's not familiar with the million dollar case study tell us about it okay so we are finding and launching products to sell on amazon and um we are documenting every single step of the way so you can follow along and we are donating all of the profits uh, from these products to a really amazing charity. And with this, we encourage you guys to follow along the process since we are sharing every last detail throughout the million dollar case save, how we're building this physical products business to a million bucks. It should be very realistic and um, possible for you to do the same. So we encourage you guys to do that. If you haven't already done so, we would really love if you give us the thumbs up or subscribe if you're tuning in on YouTube. And with that being said, we will go ahead and get started. So session number 12, there's been two phases to the million dollar case study. The first phase was our US launch where we launched hooded baby towels. This is uh, phase two where we're launching a product in Europe. This time Kim's doing all the work, thankfully, so I'm out of a job. Um, <laughs> and we're on session number 12 of uh, session, or phase two of it, where we're talking about Amazon product photography. Just real quickly, before we dive into the meat of today's episode, we do a giveaway every single week. You can enter at junglescott.com forward slash giveaway. This is where we are giving away free stuff, t-shirts and licenses to Jungle Scout. So every single week for all of 2017, we're gonna be doing this. So if you're watching the replay and it's still 2017, it's not too late. This week, um, Kumanen has won the pro extension and Mohammed has been the web app winner. Um, a great photo from Kumanen here. So at 6.30 a.m. following along um, with the million dollar case study. Um, and this is another awesome photo submitted by Mohammed. And Raul has won a t-shirt. And again, he, he wrote us a really nice message on um, our, our Facebook page. So if you guys want to be eligible to win this free stuff, like I said, junglescout.com forward slash giveaway and you can do so. Kim, why don't you give us a quick update where we're at in the million dollar case study? Okay, so um, so far we've, I mean, I've done tons so far. So <laughs> found a product and um researched it really thoroughly and verified that it's gonna succeed and it's gonna sell um i found a supplier i've nailed down my product branding and the product specification um i've looked into things like vat and getting set up with my business in europe uh set up a strong supplier agreement and ordered inventory uh just a few weeks ago as well so the the production is now underway i'm speaking to my supplier pretty much most days and getting uh updates from them on on the process and you know any questions that they have and vice versa we're, we're kind of communicating via skype um so yeah uh we, we've also taken a look at um creating a a product listing so that's something else that i'm kind of working on in the background too so there's lots of pieces of the puzzle that are starting to really come together now all right and today we're going to take this one step further today we're going to cover product photography considerations um what amazon requires in the, your product photography how to either diy your images so do the photography yourself kim's a, a fantastic photographer so she's going to give some great tips with that um, if you do it yourself, kind of the equipment that you'll need to use, if you decide instead to hire a professional, we'll give you some tips for doing that. And yeah, it's going to be a really great session. Kim, tell us a little bit more about your photography background and being self-taught. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I think I first really got into photography when I was about uh, 18 years old. I was just starting at university and bought myself a, a cheap like DSLR camera. Um, so, you know, I've, I've been pho photographing portraits, weddings. I've, I'm really into like travel photography now because travel is one of my greatest hobbies. Um, and I have done some product photography in the past as well. Um, and, and like Greg says, the main, the main point being is that it was all self-taught. You know, I didn't study it. I, I just had an interest in it and learned how to do it. 
Um, so, and you know, I'm not sort of saying that all sellers should do their own product photography, but if you are that way inclined, then you definitely can do at least some of it yourself to try and alleviate some of the costs when you're starting out. So, um, yeah, and hopefully I'm going to share some, some good tips with you today on how you can do that. And these are two really nice photos right here that you've taken. <laughs> So there's a few different considerations you guys need to keep in mind um, with your images. There's a few different places you'd want to use these images. Um, and the images that you have are very important for your Amazon listing. Um, the both, you know, I'd say on your packaging as well as your listing, um, the images on your listing are one of the main factors that drive conversions. So drive people to actually purchase your product instead of one of the other products on Amazon. And we're gonna be going over a few different of the types of images or a few of the images considerations. For example, um, the main image you know, needs to be on a totally white background and it needs to be free of um, either distractions or things that would mislead the customer into thinking that they were getting something different than they would. Um, inside of your listing, you, know, you can have lifestyle images. Um, you may choose to put some types of images on your packaging. Um, we'll kind of talk a little bit about putting like infographics or further design work on your images uh, in your listing. And yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about what we will need, Kim. Okay. So um, to get into the sort of the specifics of uh, what Amazon requires and what you actually need to put on your listing. So at the bare minimum, you're going to need at least one main image, which like Greg said, it needs to be on a white background. Now, um, from experience, I believe that uh, if you try and upload an image as your main image that does not have a white background, um, I think Seller Central like has some sort of um, code built in so it can, it can immediately detect that. So you won't even get it through if it doesn't have a white background, um, as far as I'm aware. So that's kind of like the bare minimum of what you need. Um, you need to show the product in full with no distractions. Um, you can't sort of add, you know, other things that aren't included in the product in your main image. Um, it must be at least 1000 pixels wide, although we would recommend it to be larger. And um, images on, on Amazon are square cropped. So um, the dimensions are square. Um, but obviously that's the bare minimum. So the recommended is that you have at least nine good images to use. Um, so this is how many you can put on your listing. Um, but if you have more, then that's great too, because it means you can swap them out, try different things later on down the line. Um, as we've said, you need at least one main image on a white background. Um, I would say to make sure that your images are about 2000 pixels wide or more. Um, if you're taking photographs on any like modern smartphone or camera, or if you, especially if you're getting them done professionally, they should be much bigger than that. Um, and the reason for this is because customers are able then to zoom in on your image and see it in, in more detail. Um, and then a range of other images, so including lifestyle models and infographics. So it's recommended that you have a variety of different images um, that show the product in use and really show your product off in its best light, um, because ultimately that's going to help you get more sales and more profits. All right. And then, so just to continue the boring stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess this this is the for me anyway this is the less fun part so but it is really important so um again just uh make sure that your images are very high quality um rgb color mode uh which is uh standard practice really um file types should be J jpeg or tiff um so you can't like uh upload any photoshop or illustrator files for example those won't be allowed um, particularly if you're going to work with a professional, they should know this, but it's just useful to, to know, to make sure you brief them correctly. Um, the naming conventions, uh, I'm interested to get your thoughts on this, Greg, actually, uh, Amazon state that you should put the identifier like the ASIN or the, uh, UPC, and then follow that with an optional four character, uh, code for a file extension. Yeah. Um, that's not really that required. I, it's okay. probably, I guess it's probably like best practice to do, especially if you're gonna have a bunch of products down the line, but they'll let you uh, upload photos with any naming convention. 
And what about putting uh, keywords in your um, file names? Is is uh, that a good? Point? I think there. Well, I think there may be some myths floating around, or and I call them myths that uh, that helps like with keyword relevancy or your SEO. I don't. My personal belief is that's not true, but you can give it a try if you want. I guess it doesn't really hurt anything. They end sure. up renaming yeah. your files anyway. Like if you look, if you like inspect the code like on the page. Right. Okay. Awesome. So then I guess uh, it would be good to have your naming conventions as something that makes sense to you so that you can make sense of what your images are and when you store them and file them. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, if we think about this now, at this point, it's uh, there's two different ways you go about this. We could hire someone who's a professional who's probably going to take very good images. They probably have nice equipment, a nice camera, nice lights, all that kind of stuff. Or we could do it ourselves. Um, you can actually get some pretty good photos, um, just with like a modern, uh, smartphone and some good lighting as well as some of the tips that, um, Kim's going to be giving us today. Um, obviously this is going to be much less expensive. If you try to do them yourself, but it does take some time. It can be kind of time consuming, uh, taking all the different photos, getting it ready, prepping the materials, trying to like, you know, go around your house to find the correct lighting, all that type of stuff. Um, of course, we pay uh, a professional. It's probably not going to be as time consuming, but there are some things you're going to need to keep in mind as far as like what type of instruction or brief you're going to need to give them. Um, if you want lifestyle images and well, I guess you need like the product photography, but if you also want lifestyle images, you may actually need to hire two different photographers. A lot of photographers kind of specialize in one or the other and a lot of them won't actually do both of them. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about DIY photography, Kim. Okay, so in here I've, I've put in some images from a, a blog post that I put together a little while ago on how I set up my own little photo shoot and took a photograph of a product. And the end result was actually pretty good and was definitely one that I could, could have used if I was selling that product on Amazon. So step one is to set up a white background. As we said, it needs to be on white. I used an ironed bed sheet. So straight away, you know, find items around the house. Depends on the size of the product. Um, I guess, you know, with a sleeping bag, you'd need a lot more space to shoot a product image. Um, the, the product that I used for this example was quite small. Um, so again, that's another consideration to bear in mind when you're deciding whether to do it yourself or not. Um, but yeah, so for this example, I used an ironed bed sheet and then a table. And then as you can see, there's like a raised bit of the sheet at the back. So I just used, I think it was a stack of books or you could use a box or a chair um, because that makes it a little bit easier to take the photo of a fully white background if you've got uh, a little bit of white in the background as well as on the surface that the product is sitting on. Um, and another option is you could buy a light box or a background that you can use from Amazon. Um, and then the other tip is to make sure you position this near a natural light source where possible. Um, with photography, lighting is everything. So if you're in a dark room, it's, it's not going to look great. And the, the darker the photo, the grainier it will be, it's really hard to edit it. So, you know, try and shoot it in the daytime on a, on a nice bright day and, and get near to a, a natural light source because um, that's really going to help you out. Um, so moving on to step two. <clears throat> um, so at this point, you want to add an extra light source. Um, this is something that you can play around with. So I just used a regular desk lamp here that I just had in the house. Um, you can also purchase LED light panels um, and tripods and things like that. For, again, you can get all of this stuff from Amazon. I'll show you some pictures of it shortly. Um, but in this case, I just used a regular desk lamp. And even though the, the light bulb in it was creating sort of a yellow orange light, it was okay because I, I edited the photo later, as you'll see. Um, so I, you can also turn on the light in the room. So the light on the ceiling, if that would help. Um, and the main key here is to experiment. So, you know, try moving the lamp around, try and, uh, see what creates the best light on your product and taking a few different photos with different lighting. Um, so yeah, step three is to start taking photos. Um, for this example, I actually used a smartphone. It's a, an iPhone 6S. Uh, it's not even, you know, the best smartphone camera out there, but it certainly did the trick. Um, 
I used, I, I sort of took photos at different exposures, different angles, just took lots of different photos so that I could decide which ones I liked best at the end. Um, the main thing is to ensure that your focus is set. And on most smartphones, as far as I know, you do that by tapping the screen in the area where you want to focus. Um, you can also change the exposure in, in most smartphone cameras too. Um, so you can sort of make the image a little bit darker and a little bit lighter and experiment with that too. Um, you can start to see a theme here in that you can just experiment and take lots of different photos until you get something that's starting to look like you can work with it. Kim, on the iPhone, how do you change the exposure? So on the iPhone, you hold your finger on the screen and a little sort of slider will appear uh, that has like a little sunshine icon next to it. And you scroll that up or down to make it lighter or darker, respectively. Um, I'm not actually sure how that works on like Samsung phones. I've, I've never really used one, but um, right, it's probably something. I'm pretty, pretty sure. It, yeah, for sure. Cool. And then step four is to edit. So, I mean, really, so far it's been simple. I've got some basic items from around the house. I've set it up in a nice, well-lit room. I've got a lamp. I've took a bunch of photos. And then I actually edited them on the iPhone. I didn't even export them or put them into Photoshop or, you know, a lot of people get daunted by photography thinking, well, I don't know how to use Photoshop, but there's so many apps out there these days that do a pretty good job. Um, so I actually used the editing tool, which is part of like iOS in the iPhone. Um, but there's lots of different uh, apps out there that do a very similar thing. So it's similar to the editing tools that you get in, say, Instagram or apps like VSCO. Um, you can generally edit things like the exposure, so you can make it lighter or darker. Um, the shadows and highlights, so you can play around with that a little bit. If you're seeing any unwanted shadows in the image, um, you can try to edit those. Um, highlights, uh, sorry, I've contrast so you could make the image more contrasting color and saturation uh, i think i actually added a little bit of saturation in the example you see on screen there to make the colors really pop and stand out a little bit makes the product look a little bit nicer and clarity and sharpen so if it's a little bit um, blurry you can add a little bit of sharpness to it as well and again you can just experiment don't forget that if it goes wrong you can just restore it back to the original and start again um, and most of these apps are, you use like a slider. So you just slide your finger up and down and you get instantaneous results. So you can see what looks good straight away. So it's actually a really easy way to get a simple product photo. Um, and I think, you know, that the example on the screen there is, is it could be used on Amazon. Uh, yeah, I agree. Pretty large file size nice. as well. What is that yeah. thing, Kim? What are we looking at? <laughs> It's uh, it's called a jade roller. It was uh, it's a beauty product. You roll it on okay. your face, and it's oh. supposed to like revitalize you in the morning. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, I agree. The jade roller looks pretty good. Um, it's amazing what a little bit of editing can do. Now it looks like this pure, perfect white background that Amazon would like. And it's cool. I was just taking with an iPhone and some lighting. If I were to give some tips to the um, viewers with my experience of like DIY on photography, some of the most, I think everyone thinks like, okay, I need like this like $2,000 camera to take good photos. And the truth of it, I'd say like the, like the 80, 20 rule, the 80% of it is good lighting and kind of like prep work for your particular product. So a good example, of this is like, I was just looking last week of like all of the hundreds of people or dozens of people who have copied our, um, our hooded baby towel and a lot of their product photography is like pretty bad um and it's not because of like the quality of the camera or even the lighting but it was like the prep for the actual product so if you look at ours it's like nicely like fluffed up and nicely folded someone probably even took like a comb or a brush or something to kind of like get it looking like all nice and even it doesn't have any wrinkles so maybe it was steamed first or ironed or whatever else um and it looks like very like nice and like high quality and look at theirs it's kind of like wrinkly and just like not very like fluffy, like inviting looking. So again, a lot of that is just goes back to like the prep, you know, it's going to be different for every single product, but if your product's an item that shows um, smudges, you're going to want to make sure it's like really clean. Or if it's an item that, you know, you kind of get the idea you want to like 
spend some time kind of like positioning it correctly, cleaning it, um, whatever else to just make it like look at its peak, have good lighting. And if you do both of those things, you can take really good product photography with a, uh, yeah, just like a camera like you've shown here. Yeah, definitely. All right, Kim, give us some more photography tips. Okay, so, I mean, these are some like very generic basics, but it's useful to bear these things in mind, particularly if you've never done any photography before. Um, so like I've already said, you can play around with a few different angles, show the product in different ways, um, find out which the most dynamic way to show that product is. Um, the more white space you have around the product, um, the more room you have to edit. So try not to take the photograph with the product going right up to the edges because then you might take a really good photo but find that it's slightly wonky and you can't straighten it because you have no space. Um, remember that lines are super important in photography. So you want to pos position and frame your photo so that any sort of vertical or horizontal lines running through the image aren't sort of jarring or, or weird to look at. Um, so for example, with the jade roller, I tried doing somewhere it was diagonal and vertical, but I don't want it at some sort of like weird angle where it kind of looks a little bit, uh, uncomfortable almost. Um, and yeah, make sure that you center the product like right in the center of the frame, um, for a square crop, because you're going to have to do that for Amazon anyway. Um, it might help to shoot the image as a square to begin with. You can do that on most smartphones too. Um, or you could shoot it uh, regular landscape and then crop it later on. Um, it's really up to you. Um, and then, yeah, so I, I don't know if you have any any other tips to add to that, Greg. Um, no, I think this is good. I have some a few more photography tips. I'm going to wait. I'm going to save them for the end. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, this is some examples of kind of like the DIY equipment. Most of this equipment can be purchased off Amazon or wherever else for pretty inexpensive. I think you can get these little light boxes for like 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Little LED light, same thing. Um, reflectors. These are, um, these all may, aren't required by any means, but if you are doing DIY photography, they make your life a little bit easier. Like the light box, it gives kind of like this um, a nice, like even illumination for your product, depending on, you know, kind of like when you put your lights correctly around it. Um, obviously it's also white, so it makes it, um, easy, you know, to kind of like overexpose that the, the white background to make it like that pure white that we're looking for. Um, the reflectors can help with in a natural light source, you know, to get some more light on there. Um, yeah. What other tips do you have as far as the DIY equipment, Kim? Yeah, I think definitely the the white box is worth investing in if you're shooting, you know, sort of smaller products. You can get larger white boxes, I believe, but only up to a certain size. Right. Um, it just makes it so much easier than like moving furniture around and getting sheets out and getting books <laughs> out. And so, you know, if you are going to be taking photos more than once, then it, it's a worthwhile investment. They they don't even cost very much money. Um, and the light panels, again, they're really inexpensive, but you'd be amazed at how, um, how much they can help. And it's a constant light, light source as well. So um, they're really easy to work with. You just need a few tripods and, and you're good to go. Yeah, the, another nice thing about the light boxes is if you're shooting a product that um, is reflective, it's really nice. And a lot of white boxes will even have like a front of it with just kind of a hole for your camera. That's a really nice way to not get um, kind of like the person taking the photo or the camera like in the actual image. So, you know, if you're doing like sunglasses or like that, a gold shiny like Moscow Mule Cup or whatever else, it helps a lot with that to make sure, like I said, that like the, you know, the person taking the photo isn't in the actual product. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about lifestyle images. So first of all, what is a lifestyle image? A lifestyle image is a... Um, a, you know, a photograph of a person using the the product or kind of like how the product would actually be um, used, like kind of like in an everyday life, okay? And these images are a little bit more difficult than just product images because now we're talking about models or like a staged um, kind of site. So for example, with our sleeping bags, a good example of a lifestyle image would be like people in the sleeping bag, maybe while they're camping or like on the beach or whatever else. 
And the idea behind these is one to kind of like give the customer a little bit better idea of like what it looks like kind of like in the wild, like in use. Um, this gives people a better understanding of like how large the item is. Um, also, like if we go more and a little bit more into like marketing mindset here, um, we want people to be able to put themselves uh we want people, you know, to like be able to like put themselves kind of like in the environment that we're showing with the lifestyle images, so like with the camping images, you know, like with someone in our sleeping bag, ideally this would be people having a lot of fun and they're at this perfect campsite and, you know, life's just great when you have one of these jungle slumber sleeping bags. Those would be the thoughts and the ideas behind it. So when they look at these images, we'd want them to like get those feelings or those emotions kind of like right away. Um... So I'm a fan of lifestyle images. You can see one we took right here for our um, our hooded baby towels. Obviously, that's a really cute baby, and you know, like I'm sure a lot of moms or dads just look at that and say, like, oh, like that that's a really cute. Like, you know, if my baby were to have one of these hooded towels, and he can just be this cute little guy like this, or you know, that's that's the idea behind it. So these um. These are more difficult, obviously, because like I said, we're talking about uh, models and environment and all these types of things. Um, oftentimes, like when you're working, especially like with babies or whatever else, it's a little bit more of a uh, dynamic environment. You know, they're trying to crawl away or cry or whatever else. Um, or if you're shooting outside, now all of a sudden uh, you've taken into account weather, uh, lighting's more tricky. Um, yeah, so these are all, so there are more difficult and they are more expensive if you do hire a professional. But that being said, at some point, I think it's really nice to do these for all Amazon listings, but like, I guess don't feel like you have to do these right away because they're not required by any means to get your product up on Amazon. You can always edit it later. Um, what else do you have to say about lifestyle images, Kim? I think probably my, my main tip would be like, if you are thinking of having a go at doing some lifestyle images yourself and you're a bit nervous, um, or, or anything like that, then just rem like, just, just try it out and just have a, have a go at it because you, you might be surprised by the results that you get. And, you know, you can at least, if you're sort of waiting to pay for professional lifestyle images, uh, you could at least use those in the meantime. So, um, definitely, you know, if it is something you want to try, then, then don't shy away from it. Um, again, you can, you can even do things like this with a really good smartphone. Um, like I know the iPhone has like portrait mode, which is really sweet. You can, you can make something look, a, a photograph look really, really nice just by using your, your phone these days. So, um, yeah, definitely give it a try if you're that way inclined. <laughs> yeah. And something to keep in mind, I know I've already said this, but you can always continuously continue to edit your Amazon listing. So, you know, like if you have a good photo that it's the best that you have, then go ahead and put it up. Like you can always adjust these down the line. It's not like we have to do these one time. And it's just stuck there forever. Yeah, exactly. And I, I often think that, you know, to have a nice set of nine images, even if they're not perfect yet is better than just having that one product image and nothing else. Um, and you know, that you can continue to work on it. Like Greg said, I agree. Um, we have a few tips for the DIY uh, lifestyle images. I've kind of gone over some of these a little bit. Let's just chat, chat about a little bit more. Be thinking about who your target audience is. Um, obviously for baby towels, this is very easy because it's babies, but also we're thinking about, well, who's then going to be purchasing the towels for the babies? It's like, okay, well then it's moms or dads. So, um, or generally maybe grandmas or the babysitter or whoever else, but so then we want to put, you know, like a nice like mom there who looks very happy because her baby is warm and dry and soft and snuggly and um, she's happy. Um, for our sleeping bags, we're probably going to um, photograph images of people um, uh, camping or hiking or the type of uh, or maybe at like a festival or whatever else you would generally use sleeping bags. So we'll be thinking about, you know, like how will the product generally be used? Who's the target audience? Who's like your avatar, your most likely customer for this particular product? And then like what other, you know, if you are doing these pictures yourself, you'd be thinking about like, well, what else would make like this perfect scene for us? And maybe it'd be like a nice little tent with this very picturesque, um, uh, you know, a little fire, uh, camping fire, maybe even a marshmallow stick in there. <laughs> Get a little crazy. <laughs> so these are all things you can be thinking about if you're going to be doing lifestyle images yourself. Kim, do you want to talk to us a little bit about the equipment? 
Yeah, so um, like I said, again, you can use a smartphone um, as well. Um, like Greg mentioned earlier, a lot of this comes down to the preparation. Um, so try not to get too hung up like, well, I don't have a 2000 pound camera. That is totally fine. Um, a lot of it comes down to setting up a nice image and using models and deciding, you know, how you're going to set this up. Um, that being said, if you do have a decent DSLR or mirrorless camera, then obviously go ahead and use that. Um, for me, like a versatile portrait lens is probably the best call if you are going to use a DSLR. So 50 millimeter lens is, is a really good all rounder for all sorts of images. So I would recommend that. Um, a reflector is a really good thing to have, particularly if you're shooting outdoors. Um, it's a really, you know, cheap cost-effective way to try and influence the light a little bit. Um, if you are going to go and do your own images and shoot outdoors, then uh, just remember that on a bright sunny day, that can actually be really difficult to work with because you can't turn the sun off. Um, whereas an over overcast day actually tends to be a little bit easier to work with because it diffuses the light a little bit. Um, but yeah, again, light is everything. So just try and be mindful of when you go out to take your photos. Um, and then in terms of photo editing, obviously you can use things like Lightroom, Photoshop or GIMP, which is like a, a free version of Photoshop. Um, but if that is daunting to you, then don't worry because there are other, other options too. Like I found this website, uh, photo.com. It's like an online lightweight editing tool has all of the basics in there. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, but the VSCO app on mobile is really, really easy to use. You could import your photos on there and edit them on them on your phone even. Um, so yeah, again, try not to get, you know, too bogged down. If you've never used Photoshop before, you don't have to by any means. Great. For ideas, of course, you can always check out your competition. Um, I would encourage you guys, instead of just checking out the competition on Amazon, to kind of like venture outside of that. So for our sleeping bags, um, to kind of get some good ideas. Uh, you know, I think we should be checking out like North Face and Patagonia and some of these like kind of like real high end brands or these people with like large marketing departments and large budgets um, to kind of get ideas. I think if you're only looking at the Amazon competition, it's very easy to kind of get siloed. Like again, like I noticed like all these new hooded baby towel listings, thanks to like our case study, they all have like the exact same like competitive matrix we have and all the exact same like everything. It's like um, kind of the point, what we want to teach you guys here is like we want to differentiate our, ourselves here, not necessarily just copy what our uh, competitors are doing because that, that doesn't differentiate your product or make it any better or more enticing. Um, yeah, what we did notice though, like when checking out our competition is the overall, the images are, uh, I'd say decent, but not great. There's no lifestyle images. So that gives us kind of like a competitive advantage, something we can do a little bit differently to show this product in use. I guess maybe, Kim, can we call this one a lifestyle image of this guy with his thumbs up? <laughs> um, I, well, I would say that's more of an infographic, right? <laughs> okay. <he's> definitely <laughs> been photoshopped in there. <laughs> yeah. That's not the best um, uh, look. <laughs> but it is, it is kind of funny though. I mean, it is. It's quite, yeah. it's quite eye catching. But, um, but yeah, like all of the ones on on Amazon.co.uk, um, you know, they're all like product images on white backgrounds. Like a lot of the listings have, uh, do have like up to nine images, but they're all just different angles or you know, showing the product in closer up or further away or with the bag or without the bag. And, um, yeah, there's, there's so much room for us to, to be different. Right. Agreed. Here's some examples of kind of main images. Um, these are all, uh, our competitors up on Amazon, um, for the main product image, um, let's talk real quick about what's, I know I, I kind of touched on this, but let's talk a little bit more about what's allowed and what's not allowed. Um, you know, I think if we're talking about Amazon's very, or completely going by the guidelines, I think the entire product needs to be shown in there. Um, complete white background. Um, that's the majority of it. Like in, in actuality of like, or what they actually allow, I'll tell you guys a little bit about that and then you can decide what you decide to do. It doesn't actually have to be the entire image. 
Um, they are they are fairly strict about putting like badges or like other um, like a flag or like your logo or a watermark or anything else on your main image. Those usually get taken down. Um, they sometimes allow a kind of like a model in there, but it needs to not it needs to be not deceiving to the customer about what's included. So if we had a model in our image and it was a dude holding a backpack with a sleeping bag on it, that would get taken down pretty quickly because that's like deceiving. That would make them think they get like a backpack like with the sleeping bag. Um, if it was, uh, just give me another example of like what they probably would allow. If you're selling like a headband and you showed like a, a headband on a mannequin and the mannequin was like of a neutral color, um, or white, that's something they probably would allow because that's like, it's kind of difficult to know what a headband looks like if it's just laying on like a, a flat piece of like white background. But if it's like on like a neutral colored mannequin, it's like, okay, like uh, people aren't really going to be deceived or they're not really going to think they're getting a mannequin also. Um, they probably understand they're just getting a headband. So yeah, that gives you a little bit of an idea. If you have any um, differentiating factors, like with the sleeping bag, of course, having a nice bag is one and that's why a lot of people are showing the bag with it if you have anything else um it's kind of nice to try to be able to call this out with the main image um anything i'm forgetting with the main image kim um no i mean other than like i mentioned earlier you can try sort of um if even if you are you know going to hire a professional you could maybe get a few done at the same time so that you have like different ones to fall back on and um, like we said, you, your product listing is going to change and evolve over time. So um, it may be worth thinking about getting a few different options uh, photographed early on um, so that you can uh, switch them and play around with them later on. Yeah. Something I just noticed, I guess these two images on the right, I guess they like stuffed their sleeping bags with something to make them look a little more full and a little nicer. I guess that actually does compared to the one all the way on the left. That's just totally flat. So I'll keep that yeah, in mind for yeah, it does look better. Yeah. Here's some examples of some lifestyle images. These are really high quality. I guess I guess this must be like a pretty legit brand, Kim. Is that right? Uh, this one Image. was actually, uh, I'm not sure about the brand, but it was a sleeping bag I found on Amazon.com. So on the okay. US Amazon. So I guess um, it might so just be a private label. It could but. be, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think this is this gives a really good example of lifestyle images. Like when I see this guy, you know, it's like like that looks sweet to me, right? It's like, man, it's like an awesome <laughs> river, like a really pretty like scenery. This dude's like cooking outside with his tent and stuff. Like when I see this, like I have, you know, like feelings of like excitement. Um, like this just looks like cool to me. So, you know, like when looking at like a few images like this compared to just looking at this sleeping bag on a white background it just like evokes different like emotions in the buyer. Um, so yeah, these are, these are really good, high quality uh, lifestyle images. I quite like the, the text on the images too. And like one of them says share your adventures and it's got hashtag and um, yeah, I think I, I really like these. Yeah, I agree. All right. <clears throat> so everything we spoke about earlier was a little bit about the DIY photography um, let's talk a little bit more about hiring a professional, all right? So for product images um, in particular, um, they generally cost about like 15 pounds or $20 and up. I'd say on average, the prices I normally see are probably closer to $30, $35, $40 US. Um, but some of the, the cheaper places do do them for like 20 US or 15 pounds-ish. Um, that being said, there's generally also uh, minimums. So, you know, like you can't just send in your product to get one photo taken and pay them $20. Normally it's like a minimum of five photos or a minimum of $100 or $150 or whatever else. Um, generally, I think if you're getting product photography done by a professional, I'd say expect to spend about 200 bucks. Um, maybe more, maybe less, depending on kind of like who you choose, but I think that's like a good guideline. With lifestyle images, this can vary greatly. If we were trying to get those images that we just showed you of this, um, 
this good looking dude and this beautiful scenery done, um, we could probably expect to pay, I don't know, $1,000 or maybe even more, I'm not sure. Um, but of course this is because, you know, imagine that that involves like a model and a photographer driving out to the wilderness of, of I don't know where, um, it would be pretty expensive, right? If you're just trying to get a, like a cutting board, some photos of it taken in a kitchen, something like that's going to be a lot less expensive, right? So, um, you know, maybe you get some of those done for like a couple hundred bucks. This is going to vary greatly. Um, I would say if I was you and I had like a, let's say a, a small to medium budget, you didn't really want to do um, your own uh, product photography, then I would, I would probably, if I was you, hire a professional to do the product photography and then try to do your lifestyle images yourself if you're kind of like thinking about it, just because the lifestyle images generally are so much more expensive. And I think a lot of people will probably find that whatever product they choose, they kind of kind of relate with a little bit. They're like, oh, well, you know, like, I don't know, maybe Kim's going camping soon, so she can take it with her and like take some <laughs> photographers, uh, take some photography uh, of it. Um, camping in Bali, Greg. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, it'd be like on the beach there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I would uh, need a sleeping bag in the heat. <laughs> True. Good point. All right. Um, for You can find freelancers to do your product photography and your lifestyle photography. Um, the lifestyle images are going to be much less expensive if you do find a freelancer because oftentimes they'll take jobs that, for example, like if I'm looking for a, um, a mother-like figure, to take a, a photo with a baby, you know, like a freelancer, uh, maybe he's, uh, you know, the the husband or father or whatever else. And he's like, oh, okay, like I could take this job. I could do it pretty affordable because I could get my wife and my baby to, um, you know, like be in that particular photo. Um, but of course you can find freelancers to do your product photography as well. Um, we've included a few links on the right-hand side for, um, uh, professional photographers. Kim, are these all photographers that just do product photography? Do any of them do lifestyle photography? Do you know? Yes. Some of them do both. Um, okay. and some of them just, just do product. Um, the one at the bottom is based in the U S uh, which I think you've used before Greg. Yeah. Um, so and yeah, the other three are ones that we have been recommended by people in our community. Um, you know, other sellers have used these, they're, all based in the UK, obviously, which is useful for me because I'm launching a product in the UK. Um, and some of them have like packages as well. So you'll pay like, I don't know, 150 pounds and you'll get eight images. Um, so that's a really uh, affordable way to do it as well, um, rather than paying like on a per image basis. Um, a lot of them, you know, allow you to send a sample, well, a, a, a final product straight from China to the to the photographer um, and some of them even offer to send it back to you or back to wherever you want if you want that sample back for any reason um, or they can dispose of them um, so yeah these are all like specialized product photographers that you know deal with Amazon and product photography for e-commerce generally so they're gonna be more I guess, equipped to know what you're after. You know, they're going to know the requirements for e-commerce photography. Right. And we're not affiliated with any of these companies. Uh, the only one I can even personally vouch for is the bottom one, but they're based in the U.S. Um, but like Kim said, these have been recommended by people in our community. So um, yeah, do your own due diligence on them, but they appear to all be good, uh, legit companies. All right. One way to kind of get the most out of your product photography or when hiring a professional is to give very clear guidelines to them of what you expect, okay? The more you kind of put in, the more guidance and detail you can give them, kind of the more you can get out of it. So um, Kim included some really good things that we uh, that you want to include in your brief here. And these are all kind of going to be kind of like questions the photographer would have at all. Um, a... A few of the most important things I would say would be if you're looking for any specific photos of your particular product or your products unique in any way that you really want to call out, you need to make sure to communicate that to your photographer so they know. Like, so we're doing like an anti-snag zipper on ours. 
So we're gonna ask our photographer to make sure to get like a close up of that particular zipper so we can really call it out and show it um, to our customer. Um, another example would be, I think we also, don't we have like rip stop fabric or something, Kim, is that right? We do, yeah, it looks yeah, great. <laughs> cool, yeah, so like another example would be like a, a close up on this rip stop fabric. Um, so we can kind of show like maybe in a magnifying glass or like what it looks like. Um, so anything that's like unique or special for your particular product, you're probably going to want photos of that. And then any other angles that you think are really nice um, that you've seen elsewhere, make sure to communicate those to your photographer as well. Um, <clears throat> we did put in a quick note here that... Um, of course, Splitly is one of our products. It's an A-B testing tool for Amazon sellers. So it lets you A-B test which photos are best from a st scientific standpoint, from a conversion rate um, optimization standpoint. And what we found is oftentimes your, um, your gut feeling is incorrect with what photos are gonna get you the most clicks and ultimately the most sales. So at the end of the day, the only way to really know for sure is through A-B testing and testing different images. Splitly does this for you. Um, but we want to include a note about this in here because if you can get a few extra photos or, um, you know, like I guess you can never have too many photos because it's always nice to be able to split test those down the road and figure out which one's going to get you more clicks and therefore more sales. Kim, teacher Kim, it's homework time. <laughs> Okay, so this week, um, obviously, I, we covered photography briefly, uh, I think it was two or three weeks ago now. Um, we've covered it in much more detail today. Um, so at this point, you really uh, should be, if you're following along, you should start to be thinking about either taking your own photographs or hiring a professional or both, um, whatever approach you want to take. Um, this is going to require, obviously, you're going to need when production moves along and there are some products that have been manufactured, you'll need to send one or a few products to your photographer or to yourself. Um, so that's one consideration. Um, and then the other is, you know, if you are going to do it yourself, maybe you need to buy a few things from Amazon to help out. If you're going to hire a photographer, like we just said, you need to create a really detailed brief to make sure that you make the most of your investment and get the images that are perfect that you, that you desire. Um, so yeah, um, I will be asking my supplier to send one of the first manufactured sleeping bags off of photography soon. Um, I advise that you do the same. And then in the homework sheet this week is, um, I actually included this a few weeks ago, but it's just to reiterate, there's a sort of a template there for, a, a brief that you can use. So you can use this to guide you in terms of putting together a really detailed brief to send to a professional photographer to do both product images and lifestyle images. So that's your homework for this week. All right. I wanna tell you guys about next week to make sure you join us. Um, if you haven't already registered, you can do so at junglescout.com forward slash million. Next week, we're gonna be sharing some of the tips um, and I'm kinda of gonna be kind of interviewing Kim to get a little bit of insight of what things she wish she would have known earlier, um, what types of, yeah, what else she's kind of learned along the way that she thinks that you guys need to know. One of the benefits of having Kim do the launch this time is she goes in it with a fresh mind. She's never launched a product ever before on Amazon. So she's starting out just like a lot of you guys are. So she has some really valuable insights um, to share as far as that goes. I have a couple questions for you, Kim, before we wrap this up for today. Um, sure. One would be, give us a little bit of insight of what the, the communication's been so far with the factory. So let's see, it's been like two weeks since we put down the deposit or is that right? I think yeah. two weeks, right? What, uh, yeah, what's been I going on the right. past two weeks? So uh, my contact at, at the factory is, um, it's a lady that I speak to and um, yeah, we, we speak pretty much every day on Skype. Um, we have spoke on the phone in the past as well. Um, but her, her written English is really good. Um, we've actually got a bit of a rapport going, like we've, you know, we've shared a few things, like I've told her that I'm in Bali now and she's told me where she'd like to travel to. So we're starting to form a bit of a relationship. Like right. she's, she's very nice. And, um, 
yeah, very polite and eager to answer any of my questions. Um, some of the things that I've been chatting to her about are I've been sending over things like the labels that are going to go on the plastic bag out, uh, that, to package the, the sleeping bags and the logo that's going to be printed onto the sleeping bag. And so I've, uh, the label that's been sewn into the sleeping bag, you know, I've been saying to her, what do you normally put in these labels and creating what I want to go in there. And then she's asked me questions. She's, you know, I've sent her JPEG files and she's been like, Oh, can you send the, the illustrator file? So it's very much like back and forth all the time. Um, you know, just little questions here and there. Um, it's really manageable because, um, you know, there's, there's generally no rush to answer right away. Like we've both, we've both developed an understanding that we'll respond when we get chance. It's normally the same day, if not the following day. Um, so yeah. And she started to send me photographs as well, which I'll update you guys with next week. Oh, really? Um, cool. you know, yeah. She sent me photos of like, Oh, do you like the logo here? She sent me some photos of the, the ripstop fabric that you mentioned. Oh, nice. Um, so she, yeah. Being really, really communicative, which is a really good sign. Um, and I guess at this point, if the supplier wasn't being as forthcoming as that, then, you know, obviously I would be asking for this information, but I mean, luckily she's, she's, uh, sending it without me even having to ask most of the time. Cool. So, so far you think good experience. Are you happy with our, your factory choice? Yeah, definitely. I think, cool. we're, yeah, I think it was the right choice. <laughs> okay, great. All right, fantastic. Well, I'm excited to ask you a lot more questions next week and get a little more insight of kind of like what's been going on. I'm sure the rest of the audience is as well. But for today, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, guys. If you haven't already done so, smash that like or love button somewhere below and hit the subscribe button on YouTube. If you want to follow along, I encourage you guys to do so. JungleScott.com forward slash million. And we will see you next week. See you, Kim. Bye.